for whatever reason I decided to wear long sleeves and I am already having major regrets I'm sweating but you know what I was like it's fall I want to wear long sleeves even though Texas hates me and doesn't want to cooperate it's like hot hum here instead of autumn <laughs> I know, I hate myself too, it's okay. Anyways, hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be something a little bit different. I don't think I've ever filmed, well no, I know I have never filmed this video before. I saw Taylor the Taylor here on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her channel. I'll go ahead and link her down below. I'm sure many of y'all already watch her. She's probably the channel that I frequent the most often here on YouTube. I love her content. She's super consistent. She's just very informative. Her skin journey has been amazing. If you are someone who suffers with acne, she used to have like kind of, I I wouldn't say severe, but she had acne. She went through the whole Accutane process. Her skin is absolutely beautiful. Not that it wasn't before, but I mean, just the transformation what alone was amazing to see, but she puts out great content. I just really, really like watching her. She went all the way back on her purchases list on Sephora and just shared like what she still thinks of the products, if she still uses them or not. And I don't know, I just really liked that and thought it would be fun and sit down and kind of talk about some of my purchases with y'all. So let's go ahead and jump right into them. Now, whenever I scroll back, the very first purchase that I see was from April 2nd, 2011 from the Sephora in Destin. First three purchases on here are very, very boring. There's nothing exciting on here. First up was a Sephora collection retractable eyeliner. For whatever reason, I decided to pick up the shade 17 at Turquoise. It was a shimmering bright aqua. I'm guessing I used that on my lower lash line. Honestly, I don't remember too much about that. So I can't really say. Then I picked up another item from the Sephora collection. This looks like a lash set that they don't even carry anymore. And honestly, when I look at them on here, they kind of just look like Demi Wispies that I paid way more for than a regular pack of Demi Wispies. So that was probably a product regret if I had to guess. And then finally, some Duo Lash Glue. Wow, that was like the most boring purchase ever. Okay, moving along. Apparently I didn't shop again until July 8th of 2011. And I bought the La Vanilla, the healthy deodorant in the shade pure vanilla it was $14 I'm not sure if that's still the price I still love that stuff I use that and the native deodorant um, I kind of go back and forth I love the native deodorant but the scent that I love the most is actually a holiday one it's like peppermint or something like that and they actually sell native at Target now but I do still buy the La Vanilla deodorant I've been really curious about the Donna Karen cashmere mist because everyone talks about that one so I do want to try that one next so then I picked up the Dior Dior show blackout in the shade rich black as well as the Shiseido facial cottons. I still buy the Shiseido facial cottons. I think they're amazing. So, so soft and just like plush. They're just luxurious little baby blankets for your skin. If you've never used them before, that's a product that I pretty much always pick up during the Sephora VIB sale. Now, as for the Dior Blackout Mascara, I think I purchased that maybe two more times. And then after that, I realized drugstore mascara is just as good. Honestly, I haven't purchased too many high-end mascaras. I honestly feel like waterproof mascara, specifically from Maybelline, work just as good as high-end. High-end mascaras are just a harder, like product for me to justify when there's so many good ones at the drugstore. So I don't think that's, God, my posture is so bad. But yeah, I don't think I purchased that one more than two times. And then in February of 2012, I picked up one of the Makeup Forever Aqua Creams in purple. I may still have that. It could be dried out, but I think I still have it because I just remember that being a product that I absolutely loved. That's when I was crazy about the L'Oreal infallible like pressed shimmer shadows. I would use that as like a tacky base and then go in with a shimmer shadow on top. But these are cream shadows that do dry down. They stay on your lids all day. They're absolutely beautiful. I probably have two or three of them. If I can find it still, I'll go ahead and insert a swatch of it. But yeah, I would definitely buy another aqua cream because I really, really did like those. Then in May of 2012 from the Sephora Florida Mall, so at this point we were living in Orlando, I purchased the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. <laughs> wow. To be honest, I didn't use that. I think when I first bought it, I did use it, but I haven't really reached for that in a really long time. I think I was someone who just preferred the original Naked palette over the Naked 2. I do still have the Naked 2 palette. All right, and then in that same month, I purchased the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Foundation. It was $39. I got mine in the shade 29H Light Medium Honey. I hate that stuff. I'm not quite sure if I even liked it back then, but 
I don't know, like it has that interesting whipped moussey texture and it it's a foundation that you can just feel on your skin. I think I may have liked it back then. I remember using it with like the um, Tarte Bamboo brush, which isn't on here. So I wonder if I got that at Ulta. But yeah, I have definitely decluttered that foundation forever ago. It's just something that feels gross on my skin. It just feels like it sits on top and I can feel it all day long. I remember that was a holy grail for so many people, but ugh, no, do not like that foundation. I also bought the Bliss Clog Dissolving, what was this? A Clog Dissolving Cleansing Makeup Milk. Ooh, I, don't, I honestly don't even remember that product. Is it like a cleansing oil? Apparently it's no longer carried, so darn. I really wanna try that now, I'm interested. I honestly can't remember much about that product. Okay, next we have the Laura Mercier Invisible Loose. This is the Secret Eye Brightening Powder, I think, or is it the regular powder? Let me see. It's just the Invisible Loose Setting Powder. Wow, I didn't think I had used that that long ago in 2012. Oh, you know what? This isn't the same thing as the Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is the white one instead of like the slightly beige, like translucent one that many of us use today. This was just the loose one. But you know what? I think I purchased that two or three times, so I really did like that one. Then in November, I got the Urban Decay Smoked Eyeshadow Palette. Holy crap, I used the mess out of that because it came with a mini um, primer potion as well as I think the, is it Zero that came in there? Their 24-7 Glide-On Pencil. I used that top row in the matte brown in that shadow so, so much, darn it. I can't click it, it's no longer available. Wow, that's sad because I use that palette so, so much. Aw, memories. Okay, and then in November of 2012, we have the Bobbi Brown and Bronzer in Medium. I do still really like that bronzer. I actually haven't used that in forever. That's kind of gross because I still have that and I bought it in 2012. <laughs> oh, I have hit pan in it though, so I mean, that says something. Then in 2013, I got the Too Faced Boudoir Eyes Soft and Sexy Palette. That was a really pretty palette that had really light, like plummy purple tones, as well as some like blackened plums. I do still have that palette as well. I used that one a ton. In fact, I wanna say that I may have used that, like the makeup artist may have used some of that like on my wedding day, and then that's why I purchased it. I'm pretty sure that's right. And then in 2013, I bought my first NARS Laguna powder. I have gone through so many of those. I still remember to this day, way back when there was this site, it was like a makeup swap site. Oh my God, I wish I could remember the name of it, but I had actually swapped my Urban Decay, or not my Urban Decay, my MAC stripped down pencil for a Laguna powder like you do, would just swap with like random strangers this was like before I was on YouTube or anything my friend had told me about it so I bought one and like it had barely been used it may have like had slightly hit pan like in a corner I'm actually wearing Laguna today I love that bronzer that is a bronzer that I think I will continue to buy for the rest of my life I just think it is so so beautiful okay then we have the NARS satin lip pencil in the shade U what year was this 2013 I was still wearing those like bright hot pink colors, which I never wear now. You know, like back in the day, people would wear like MAC Candy Yum Yum, all those like fuchsia pinks. Those used to be my jam, like the Revlon Lip Butter and what was it, fuchsia or something berry, fruit punch, something that was like a, an obnoxious hot pink. I used to wear that and I bought NARS U. I don't think I would ever wear that shade ever again. It's almost like a freaking highlighter. Okay, then I bought the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation. I think I used that foundation for a week and then I finally realized just no. I still clearly even remember my husband telling me like, you look like you have makeup on. Because you know, like obviously I wore makeup, but that was a foundation that just really looked heavy on my skin. I can't wear it anymore. Like my skin is way too dry for that. I used it because I bought it and I remember I ended up giving it to someone because it was just too full coverage. Estee Lauder Double Wear is full coverage, but the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation is just like, freaking face paint. I just can't do it. If you have like a really, really bad redness or acne and you're just trying to cover everything, like your secrets from 20 years ago, that stuff will do it. It's no joke. I feel like it's war paint. It's way too much. Then in August of 2013, I bought the NARS Satin Lip Pencil in the shade Golshan, which is a spiced wine. I might still have that too. <laughs> That's no, actually, I think I did declutter that. This is sad. A lot of these products are like no longer available, which makes me sad because I would want to go back in and swatch them again. I might have that. I might. 
gross, I know, but I do remember liking that. And then in August of 2013, I bought one of these Sephora favorites kit. It was $25, it was the give me some lip that sucks. If it's a product that's no longer available, you can't see what was in it. Okay, but there's a Tarte um, Chubby Lip Crayon, I think maybe an Exposed, either a Bite or Sephora Collection one, a mini Fresh Sugar one, a mini NARS, that's either Orgasm Lip Gloss or Turkish Delight, a mini Buxom, and then it looks like a mini Laura Mercier. Huh, so that was like a good variety of products. And then we have the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick Highlighter in Bronze, I still have that. I still love Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick. Nobody talks about those anymore, which is really sad because I love those. I still use them. But I bought a Stila Color Me Glossy set. It had three different three-piece trios in there. Well, obviously, if they're three pieces. Do y'all remember these? This isn't available anymore either. I don't even know if Stila still makes glosses that look like these, but they were like the clear ones that cranked up and had a brush tip applicator. I used to be obsessed with those. I remember there was one like an apricot that I absolutely loved. Holy crap, I probably used up most of those. I remember loving them. Okay, this is whenever I found something that was a dupe for the um, Anastasia one. I don't think you get as much, but I did really, really like these. They were from the Sephora collection, they're $12. The retractable brow pencils, I bought three of them in the shade Nutmeg Brown. <laughs> I kind of want to repurchase that because I really do remember loving those. All right, then we have a Beauty Blender Blender Cleanser Solid. I don't use that anymore. I really like Zot Soap to clean my Beauty Blender. It gets like every ounce of foundation or concealer, or anything that you have in your Beauty Blender, it like baptizes it and comes out like a fresh new Beauty Blender. Love it. That is it for this video. Let me know if you guys would like to see like a part two, maybe like next month or the month after. Hopefully this video was somewhat interesting to you. It was fun for me just to take a trip down memory lane. If you guys are beauty insiders as well, definitely log on to your app or online and let me know what your very first purchase was down below. I'm definitely curious just because I'm a nosy person, what can I say? But yeah, I hope you guys all have a great day. If you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe. I would love to have you here. Also, if you wanna hang out on Instagram or Twitter, I will leave all my handles down below. And yeah, that is it. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.